Classified documents are found in the home and private office of U.S. President Joe Biden. That's months after the FBI recovered secret papers from the residence of his predecessor, Donald Trump. So how significant are these latest discoveries and what are the political implications? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Fully Batibo. An investigation by a special counsel has been ordered into why classified papers were kept at U.S. President Joe Biden's home and private office. That says a similar inquiry is continuing into why secret documents were found stored at Donald Trump's Florida residence. What are the implications of the latest find and its timing and how do the two cases compare? These are some of the questions we'll be asking our guests in just a moment. But first, this report from our White House correspondent, Kimberly Harkett. The discovery of a second batch of classified documents, this time inside the garage of President Joe Biden's private residence, has made it difficult for Biden to quell this latest political controversy. People know I take classified documents and classified material seriously. White House lawyers revealed the documents were found recently and relate to Biden's time as vice president under President Barack Obama. The White House lawyers insist they immediately turned the documents over to the National Archives. Still, the Department of Justice is appointing U.S. Attorney Robert Hur as special counsel to investigate whether Biden broke the law. I will ensure that Mr. Hur receives all the resources he needs to conduct his work. The White House insists it's cooperating and is denying any impropriety. It's in the statement of, uh, uh, from his lawyer, Richard Sauber, and at the end, he said, we are confident that their thorough review will show that these documents were inadvertently misplaced. Still, it's an administration under increased scrutiny. Earlier this week, while Biden was at a summit in Mexico, the White House admitted lawyers found similar secret papers at a Washington, D.C. think tank called the Penn Biden Center. The president says he doesn't know what's in those documents, but the discovery has prompted charges of hypocrisy. In January 2022, classified documents were found at the Florida residence of former President Donald Trump. A Justice Department special counsel is also looking into that case. Biden has called Trump totally irresponsible for mishandling the classified materials. Another faux pas by the Biden administration, but treating law differently based upon your political beliefs. Treats one President Trump one way, but treats President Biden a whole different way. President Biden's Republican critics are also questioning why it took so long for the Biden administration to reveal the existence of the documents. The first batch was discovered on November 2nd, just days before the congressional midterm election, but only became known to the public this week. Kimberly Helkett, Al Jazeera, the White House. Well, let's take a closer look at the timeline of events. On November the 2nd, Biden's lawyers discovered documents at a private office used by him in Washington, D.C. That was six days before the midterm elections. The FBI began an investigation a day after those elections on November the 9th to determine whether classified information had been mishandled in violation of U.S. federal law. On December the 20th, classified documents were found in the president's private library attached to his garage in Wilmington, Delaware. On January the 9th, the White House revealed more classified documents had been discovered in an office used by Biden at the University of Pennsylvania. On Thursday, Biden's lawyer told the Justice Department of the discovery at the president's home a special counsel investigation was appointed. Let's bring in our guest now for today's show. Arshad Hassan is a Democratic political strategist. He joins us from Buffalo, New York. James Davis is a Republican political strategist. He joins us from Arlington, Virginia. And joining us from Vancouver, Canada, is Glenn Carl, a former Central Intelligence Agency officer. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us on Inside Story. Arshad, let me start with you and ask you about the timeline, which is the big question everyone's asking, of course. 
given that the first batch of documents were discovered six days before the midterm elections, why did it take so long to tell the public about these discoveries? I think the most important thing about either of these two cases with either of these two presidents is the concept that no one should be above the law. So a piece of the timeline that I think is really relevant here is it, that really speaks to how people behave is November the 2nd, we found, or the, the Biden team found those documents. November the 3rd is when they handed them over to the National Archives. They were within one day handed to the National Archives, who they themselves then notified the Justice Department. The critical piece in this is that it took one day, that's immediate in terms of government, in terms of the government acting, for Biden to turn over these documents. The comparison, really the contrast here between these two cases with President Trump and President Biden is that President Biden held on to, lied about, and then obfuscated investigations taking up to two years. The government appointed a special counsel within a couple months over the holiday period of finding, about, of finding out about these documents, whereas with Trump, it took 10 months. So here, the contrast is President Biden and his team acted immediately, acted swiftly to return the documents under custody, and then voluntarily investigated wherever else those documents might be, and in a few places, turned up more documents, and again, mm. immediately handed them over. All right, James. As this investigation continues... Yeah. Well, go ahead. Now, I was going to ask uh, James his thoughts about the timeline and the fact that we're finding out about these documents uh, some two months since they were first discovered. Yeah, I'd, I'd hardly call anything about this immediate. I mean, he had the documents in his possessions for uh, several years. Um, of course, you know, uh, the timeline of, of turning them over, notifying, I, I mean, kudos on that part of uh, of it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we don't even know what the scope of all the documents that he may have are. Um, uh, there, you know, I'm sure even President Obama is looking in his closet to see if he has any documents at this point. Uh, it's clear is there, there's, a, there's a breakdown in process and uh, in our uh, archival system, and, and we are not tracking those. Like, who should be monitoring this? How are we keeping those things secure? Uh, and, um, you know, the bigger issue politically here is that it does reek of hypocrisy because it is hypocrisy. Um, you know, Biden could have come out and said, hey, we have documents too before the election, and uh, it wasn't convenient to do that for them for political reasons. Arshad, uh, I'll, I'll ask you to respond to that briefly before I bring in Glenn. Uh, James says there's a double standard here politically. That isn't true. What we do know is that both presidents had documents they were not supposed to have. The contrast is what they did when they found out that they were in possession of documents they weren't supposed to have. It's pretty clear from the investigation so far that Donald Trump kept these documents intentionally. He bragged about them and then tried to hold on to them, lied about how many he had. Nothing like that has been the case with the Biden administration. We don't know, and so far the Biden administration has denied that they had knowledge of keeping these. They never showed these documents to anyone, never bragged about it to anyone, and then handed them over immediately upon finding them. And most importantly, there's voluntary compliance on the part of the Biden team to hand these documents over and bring them back to where they belong, and voluntary compliance with the investigation around this. The special counsel was appointed, again, within months of finding this out mm. over the holiday break. This is a huge difference to what Trump and his team did okay. to keep those documents. All right. Glenn, let me bring you into the conversation now. Please explain to our international audience, Glenn, why the discovery of these classified documents, whether at President Biden's or former President Trump's residences, is problematic. How much of a national security breach is it when classified documents remain with elected officials once they leave office? Well, the answer is that it can vary from it's uh, of no real consequence to it endangers the, uh, the future of the republic. It, it does depend entirely on the nature of the information, the classified information that has uh, th that is in question. Mm. There are multiple levels of classification uh, from uh, something called limited official use, which which is formally not a, a legal. Uh, classification that one has to uh, secure up to what is called compartmented information, 
which is more literally uh, more secret than top secret. And there are some classifications and some uh, kinds of information that are so sensitive that even the name of the classification may not be stated except to those who have access. So you can't say it's called um, ultra, which that's a word one can use. So it, it all varies. Uh, there are thousands, dozens of thousands of people in the federal government who have classification authority. I did mm -hmm. as a routine matter, as an operations officer in the CIA. The documents I created, I decided how to classify. That could be amended, but you have to take an initial by a superior. But one has to take an initial stab. So why would this be dangerous to have classified information that uh, is poorly handled improperly handled or that uh, could leak. Uh, there's the the first risk of compromising sources and methods. You know, we should never reveal that a certain individual is working with the U.S. government or that the U.S. has a certain capability that uh, provides it uh, an advantage, frankly. Do we know, uh, Glenn, what, was, what was in the documents? Glenn, do we know what was in the documents that were found at President Biden's residence? Right. Well, as far as I am aware, and I, I have to go on uh, only what I read in the in the media, of course, uh, we don't know yet. We don't know the classification level, uh, and we don't know the, uh, the even the broad subjects of the information. I, I will say broadly, whether it's President, uh, ex President Trump, or President Biden, or any other uh, official, in particular a political figure, uh, the dangers are huge in having physical documents, or as we have uh, learned to uh, even electronic ones, uh, outside a formally controlled space where classified documents can be uh, observed and, and uh, stored. Uh, because there are thousands of papers and uh, bits of information per day that cross everyone, across each person's uh, desk, mm. and it becomes very, very difficult to control that and uh, errors occur all the time. There is a very clear process used all the time uh, in the national security establishment. Right. For what but does one Glenn, do? What does the institution do when right. there's a... L let me ask you, what, what is it that triggered this? I mean, the, the fact that, that the president's lawyers are saying that they found these documents and how is it different from the FBI raid at Mar-a-Lago? Well, the difference is in how the, it seems pretty clear in, in the response uh, which Im leads us to some insight, possibly, about intent, about the response of the principal uh, individuals or parties involved. Uh, it appears that President Biden's lawyers found documents and then uh, that day informed the appropriate authorities who then the following morning retrieved them, whereas in the case of ex-President Trump, uh, the uh, absence or the, law, the lack of certain documents uh, in his uh, file, discovered okay. actual archives, who then inquired, and when having been stonewalled, then turned to the, the next authority. So there's a substantial difference that way. Okay. All right. So, Arshad, there is the legal court, but there is also the court of public opinion, of course. The Republicans now control the House, and they've campaigned on the promise to investigate uh, President Biden and the Biden crime family, as they call it. Does the discovery of these documents not add fuel to the fire? At this point, there's nothing that Democrats can't do, can do that Republicans wouldn't find a way to criticize. So that's not really my worry. They'll figure out something to make into a big deal. What the American people will respond to is whether or not our leaders consider themselves above the law or if they believe in the rule of law. And for this, this is a serious matter. For this, I think it's important to look at the behaviors, the actions of the people in, in question here. As, as you heard from our national security expert, it matters what a person does because it speaks to intent. Why would Donald Trump be holding on to secret, top secret, and compartmentalized information documents for two years and then deny that he had them? Whereas you take a look at the other side over here with Joe Biden, his lawyers found the documents, turned them in immediately, and started cooperating immediately. The two actions, these two different sort of sets of behaviors, will tell the American people who they can trust. All right, James, your response to that. Does this damage President Biden's longstanding commitment to transparency? 
Yeah, I think it does. And and I think they're suffering a bit from the conditions created, the outrage um, uh, created with the Trump documents, the comments that uh, President Biden uh, made in the media and um, his administration made in the media about the irresponsibility and how they were handling documents and all of those things, uh, compromising national security, those things are going to come back to haunt them. And it's also going to give more ammunition to uh, House Republicans who are going to look into this and uh, it will likely be tied to Hunter Biden and his laptop and, and looking into those issues as well. Um, at the end of the day, though, the reality is we just need a better process for getting these documents back in. It is insane to me as someone who worked for Secretary Rumsfeld and Secretary Gates uh, and, and actually worked inside a skiff in the Pentagon uh, that you have these documents just floating around and no one knows where they are. That's just not the protocol that we operated with uh, in, in my office. All right. So, so Glenn, what is the, the protocol in these instances? Is it possible also that these documents could have been shared with someone who's not supposed to be seen? Oh, well, it's certainly possible the documents could have been shared with someone who should should not see them. Uh, the instant a document uh, goes beyond a, a secure space, there is there is risk. Uh, someone can pass by, someone can overhear, someone can target uh, the uh, location where the information is kept. So all of that is certainly a risk. And it, it is an immense problem because the number of documents are huge. But the point that you first led with is also really important. The protocols are multiple. Mm. Uh, the Defense Department has uh, a large number of them also, which uh, differs substantially from the CIA, which differ from those of the NSA, and on and on. Uh, all of them uh, seek to achieve the same thing, but the, the processes differ. And then uh, all of them, whether it's the Defense Department or the, uh, the CIA or National Security Agency and so on, uh, have to interact with political um, uh, figures who are our superiors, our bosses, the policymakers, uh, who uh, are not professionals in this and have different uh, obligations and objectives and procedures. And uh, that's always a fear for a national security professional that something uh, uh, that will happen, as we see did happen, both with Presidents uh, uh, Trump and Biden. Mm. All right, uh, James, some of your Republican counterparts believe the DOJ, the Department of Justice, should be investigating President Biden, and yet there's no evidence that he intended to conceal the documents. W where do you stand on what should happen next? Well, I think, I think actually the attorney general made the right call. He called for a special investigation. And, and um, I think it was, he had to. I mean, that was something that he had to do. Uh, it's important to restore the trust of our institutions and um, the Justice Department. People will be looking, Republicans, Democrats, independents, and they will be evaluating on their own ends whether they believe that the two cases were treated fairly. Uh, I think it's really interesting to see what happens in the Trump case. And, uh, you know, depending on that outcome, uh, what that means for 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 Biden, um, I think if they prosecute Trump and then they don't prosecute uh, Biden or if there's not charges, I, I don't know. It's going to be very difficult. And I think uh, Americans are going to be looking at that. Do you think it, it's threatening to President Biden's agenda? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think it's just another another distraction. It's one more thing that they're going to have to worry with uh, and continue to manage. I mean, this is an actual crisis. We have multiple days of news on it. We have multiple documents that, you know, multiple locations for documents. Now the investigation. So we're going to be waiting on that. And there's going to be likely more drips of information throughout. And just from as a comms professional, as a, you know, someone who handles crisis communications, you really want to get a sense of the scope of, of, of the problem from the front end so that you can come out and you can share everything that you know, uh, and you can continue to keep people updated as the, as the process goes on. And it seems like they don't really know the scope at this point. All right. Uh, Arshad, your response to this. James says another distraction, especially when, you know, inflation was falling, Biden's approval ratings were rebounding, and then you have this, uh, this case. How are Democrats and, and the Biden administration going to handle this? Well, of course, the Republicans are gleeful anytime that we can move on from what they were just doing in Congress, failing to, to find their speaker, failing to find any kind of agenda. So, of course, they'll latch on to this. But here's the thing. I actually welcome this investigation. 
The attorney general picked a Trump appointed um, U.S. attorney, somebody who actually has years of experience investigating um, uh, improper retention of classified documents. This man is highly qualified and, and beyond reproach. And because I agree with the Biden administration's cooperation with the Justice Department, I actually feel like this investigation will wrap up quickly. Do the you think so? Is it not likely to overshadow the president's next months in office and, and potentially his uh, bid for 2024 if he decides to announce it? I don't think so. One of the truisms in politics is that the cover-up is worse than the scandal. But he hasn't really been covering anything up. Remember that as soon as he found the documents, he handed them over. He voluntarily searched for more documents, handed them over. Because this is happening so quickly, I think that this will resolve pretty quickly. And the charges are potentially quite different as well. With Trump, it's uh, obstruction of justice. With Biden, it's the improper retention of documents. These are different charges. And although they're both very serious, the intention and the behaviors behind them paint the contrast that will show Americans what the difference is between a president who believes in the rule of law and transparency and one who only believes in himself. All right, Glenn, Carl, your thoughts. Ultimately, what could come out of both these cases? Well, there are two realities and two worlds that uh, overlap, intersect, um, but are, are quite distinct. And that's the political world and then the national security uh, world. Certainly in the political world, uh, what has happened both with uh, Trump and uh, Biden uh, is a political uh, storm, at least. Uh, and, and that's quite significant and, and has uh, real consequences that our colleagues are um, spend their time uh, working on. From the national security perspective, it might be all of this uh, turn out to be a tempest in a teapot, or it could be a typhoon. Uh, we don't know. Uh, if the information simply is, uh, the document, say, contains a, pr a personal observation about a foreign official's character, that could be embarrassing, and you wouldn't want that to be made public, but that's not a grave national uh, matter of national security. If the information, however, compromises our strategy, our policies, our dispositions, our capabilities with regard to North Korea or China or anywhere else, uh, then that would be a typhoon and would have huge implications. But we don't know that uh, yet, uh, except to the extent that you know, we know that there are 325 documents, uh, some which uh, we saw have uh, a high security uh, classifications in the Trump case. And it appears there are fewer documents with, we don't yet know, but mm -hmm. it, it seems not as high security uh, for Biden. All right, James, in Arlington, I'll give you the last word. Some have described this as a political gift for the Republicans. What are they going to do with it? Well, I, 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 I don't know. I think the House will uh, obviously tie this into the investigations that they're looking at uh, having and, and um, you know, looking into Hunter Biden, whether or not, uh, you know, he had any involvement in this. There's already been some discussions about emails that were sent to the Penn Biden Center in advance of uh, of the center being announced. And, um, and so I, I think a lot of that is going to just drip out over and over and over again. And it will likely uh, be a topic in Washington for a while. Uh, but I think we can all agree that, you know, regardless, Republican, Democrat, uh, uh, it's in the best interest of our national security uh, to get the documents that are outstanding uh, back into the archives and to ensure that if there were uh, to look at whether or not, you know, there was any compromised uh, information that was passed along uh, or used in any, uh, any way, shape or form, whether that would be with Trump or with Biden. And so uh, hopefully that's where our country can go from here. And, and briefly, do you think a former President Trump's legal team will benefit from this? I think they'll, they'll, they'll certainly use it, but they're not just going to look at this. They're also going to look at Hillary Clinton's hard drive, like, uh, likely, and the digital files that she had, as you remember. Um, and, and, you know, we have to take them at the word that they okay. wiped them clean. And so that's going to be part of the discussion, too. Ashad, briefly, your response to that. It's not just uh, President Biden, but also Hillary Clinton's. And, and all of this seems to be overshadowing the Democrats' agenda. The Republicans love bringing up Hillary Clinton's emails, and I think it's absurd. Hillary Clinton testified for month, for hours in Congress every time they called on her, and Trump has done no such thing. The difference in behavior between, well, let's talk about Hillary Clinton too, and Joe Biden when confronted with this is that they go immediately, mm -hmm. transparently, 
um, to divulge the information that is asked of them. I would hope that the Trump administration would have done the same, but they haven't. That's why these are two different investigations. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for a very interesting discussion. I'm sure we'll be talking about this uh, some more in the next few weeks. Thank you, Arshad Hassan, James Davis, Glenn Carl. And thank you as well for watching. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can, of course, also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fuli Batibo, and the whole team here in Doha. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.